on the first one here, uh, we don't see the abnormality, so it was taking a couple months earlier. Okay, and I want you to compare it to the one on the right, which is the same patient, but you now see um, mediastinal widening. And the reason for this is aortic dissection. Uh, so I want you to look at this x-ray and, and kind of grasp the, the differences. Uh, to me, something that initially pops out is uh, the blunting of this of the aortic knob. So you all that uh, cardiomediastinal silhouette here on, on the left side uh, is actually has disappeared. So we don't see the aortic knob and we don't see a lot of the defining structures. At the same time, on the right side, the same thing is happening. So this is characteristic of or at least make you uh, suspect that something's going on with this mediastinal widening. So you, you should immediately suspect uh, and consider aortic dissection. Now, here we have uh, three images. First, this is uh, already another patient. So we have uh, another uh, plain x-ray where we see kind of like the same uh, mediastinal widening and, and note, note, uh, you should notice the aortic knob is also uh, blunted so all the normal uh, silhouette that you're supposed to see on the left side you're not seeing it anymore uh, so you should know that once this mediastinum is enlarged the differential diagnosis aortic dissection should be very high especially in a patient that presents um, with acute onset of chest pain so that's definitely an important diagnosis and so we proceed and we do a, a CT scan and what's important um, for us to identify this dissection is going to be the intimal flap what we call the intimal flap so in here on a contrast CT you see on the this is the descending aorta so you see this this line here this represents the intimal flap and as you know in the aortic dissection you're going to have two lumens. One is called the true lumen and one is the false lumen that occurred due to the dissection. What's important to know here is that it's not always um, easy or straightforward to identify which, uh, which of the two lumens uh, is actually the true lumen and which one's the false one. So as a general rule, uh, the true lumen tends to be uh, the smaller one so you know seeing this obviously it's just hard from from this image but making the small lumen uh, it is usually the the true lumen that's the one we're gonna consider to be your, our true lumen but you need on depending on the on the study you need to trace and see where that's coming from uh, but I think it's an important point first to know that it's not always easy and in a sense, it might be even counterintuitive because the false one is actually the, the larger one most of the times. Um, also, some people say that uh, on the descending aorta, the false lumen tends to, to spiral uh, to the posterior aspect uh, of the aorta. Um, okay, so another thing that I wanted to review here is that there's two schemes uh, for classifying aortic dissections. And you should know that's uh, the DeBakey's one and the other one is the daily, also known as the Stanford classification. So starting with the Stanford one, it's only divided in between type A and type B. And I think a good mnemonic, obviously type A involves ascending aorta, and this approximately two-thirds of acute dissections uh, are actually type A. Uh, and then for the Bacon's classifications, you're going to have type 1, type 2 and type 3. The difference is that type 1 involves the entire aorta, uh, both ascending and descending, while type 2, uh, which are often associated with Marfan's, involve only the ascending aorta. Uh, and then type 3 involves the descending aorta and is related to hypertension or trauma most of the time. So uh, in, in this image here that we see both is a coronal section, so we see uh, the intimal flap. It's not really appreciated here, but it's, it falls all the way down. So uh, it's pretty much covering the entire descending aorta. And we need to determine if this is, uh, we see it's happening here uh, as part of the aortic arch, but we need to determine when the, the flap started. So assuming it started distal, to the left uh, subclavian artery, then we consider it to be 
uh, covering the descending aorta. So this will be more of a, of a type B dissection uh, in Stanford, in which type B doesn't involve the ascending uh, aorta. So in technically, type B dissection do not involve the aortic arc and typically arise distal to the left subclavian artery. So now we have reviewed two classifications, uh, both the Stanford and the DeBakey classification. And we already saw some characteristic uh, imaging characteristics of uh, mediastinal widening representing an aortic dissection.